Say. That's true, Ralph. <laughs> he wants to go get a shower. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, let's see. Well, it was a great year, there's no doubt about it. And I guess one of the things that might be a little bit interesting to talk about, the fact that uh, the Mets did win easily. They got out in front, had the big lead, and sort of a, a, a place in the end of the, at the end of the season where things calmed down a little bit. The Mets said he didn't, uh, didn't explode, but in the last few ball games, everything exploded it looked like you guys are really on for this playoff well yeah i think everybody is um, real excited about going into the playoffs it's, it's the first time for most of the players on this ball club and we look forward to it. we've been hearing a lot of negative things about the ball club saying that we're we're cocky we're hot dogs and we're nothing but showboats but that's not true we go out there to perform just like every other ball club go out there to perform and we just get excited about the things we accomplished this season. And most people don't realize that. And I think our ball club just have to take it the way we've been taking it all year. And we just have to listen to the bad news. But, you know, the last couple of games, we've really been into it. We've been going out there, busting our tail, and trying to get things on the right track where we can get ourselves prepared for the playoffs. And you really finished strongly, too. Well, I'm always, I always seem to come on um, down the last part of the year. And I'm real excited about it. I look forward to it after all the things that I experienced this past season and with the negative things. Uh, that's just something you have to go through. And I kind of put it out of my mind. And I, I, I got bigger and better things to happen for me in my career and also in the playoffs because this is my first time to show everybody um, what it's really like to be in tight situations and showing what you're capable of doing. Yeah, but Daryl, you don't want to put the pressure on yourself, though. You want to go at it, uh, you just want to go at it like Daryl Strawberry. Don't, uh, you don't want to go at it by saying, well, I got to go uh, a parade or something like well, that. Well, no, I'm not saying that, Ralph, but I'm saying uh, when you find yourself into a good groove, uh, you motivate yourself to do well. And that's my case right now. I'm motivating myself. Um, Carter's uh, starting to come along, swing the bat real well. And it, me and him, having me and him in that order of the lineup, we're the two guys that really have to drive in the big runs because Dykstra and Backman, they set the table, and you know, the Mex, he's always there to uh, yeah. come up with the big hits. But the big man's to hit the long ball, and we need that out of us. We're going to need that sometime out of us during, during the playoffs. And it's good to see that both of us start sw swinging the bat well, and we're starting to hit the long ball. Well, Gary, you experienced uh, a rather disappointing playoff when you got beat by the Dodgers in the uh, strike season right. when uh, Rick Mundy hit that home run in the ninth inning to beat you out of it, and that, that had to be a a low point in your career it was a low point it was a high point the fact that we finally did get to the playoffs and it was because of the strike shortened season that we got in uh we won the second half but yet we still didn't have the best record that was what was so gratifying about this year when you play a full 162 game schedule and, and dominated like we did all year and then of course finish off strong like we did 108 victories I know Davey's very proud of it. We all are very proud of it. And uh, now we're just uh, really excited about the playoffs to occur. It, it's just uh, uh, one of those things when you finally clinch like we did uh, in the middle of September, uh, there was a little bit of a downtime. Obviously, that's going to happen. But then uh, we caught fire. We got good, solid pitching at the end. And uh, we've really come together when it was the, the, the most necessary, I think. And then when uh, we've got a workout tomorrow, one in uh, Houston on Tuesday, we're going to be primed and ready to go for that Wednesday contest. One of the things that I find interesting about the Mets is that the enthusiasm is there and it's honest. And there are so many. It's spread out over so many. It's not just one or two people trying to lead the club. Everybody has that dedication, determination, and enthusiasm. Exactly, Ralph. That's the way it's been all year. It's been contributions from everybody. The pitching staff all the way through to the bullpen, and the same thing with all the starters and all the guys coming off the bench. It's just been a total team effort. And the chemistry is so outstanding, and, and everybody pulls for one another, and that's why we've had the success that we've had this year. When you've got a team that uh, has the talent, but yet has a group of guys that really pull together, uh, you're bound to have a winning season, and that's what exactly what we've experienced this year. A little example of that, the first inning of the ball game, it was Gary Carter at the plate, two runners on base, and the record in hand, Rusty Staub with 105 RBIs, a Met record, and here Gary ties it. Boy, you hit this one. <laughs> that felt good. The wind was blowing out a little bit, and I didn't realize how far it did go until Bill Robinson brought it to my attention at first. I, I was up there hacking. The first pitch was a change-up. The next one was a slider down and in and missed that. And now he has me 0-2, and, and he threw a fastball up around neck high, and I was just hacking, and uh, fortunately the ball went out of the ballpark. But uh, what really put the game out of reach was uh, Straw's Grand Slam. That was what was outstanding. We're going to take a look at that. Of course, that was your 24th home run of the year. 
And you now have 105. You're in the record book with Rusty Staub, tying the Mets record for RBIs. And, of course, their second year uh, of 100 RBIs uh, in a row. Well, it's a, it's a thrill, and, and I credit really the rest of the guys, like Straw was saying, the Dykstras, the, the Backmans, uh, uh, the Mookie Wilsons, the Tim Tuffles, the guys that are at the top of the lineup that get on base to give us the opportunity to drive them in. Without them getting on base, it's tough to drive in those runs. And, of course, uh, Keith has always been consistent. He's a lifetime 300 hitter, and, and he, he's always uh, going to be on base for you. He's got a high on-base percentage. Uh, he walks 90-plus times a year and all, and it just makes it that much easier for us. But uh, to be in the record book is, is a thrill, and to be able to share it with uh, my big brother, Rusty, it's always nice to be a part of that, too. And you also might, as you're tied right now with Glenn Davis, have the uh, game-winning RBI. Well, it'd be a thrill to, you know, it's, it's one of those things, that it, 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 that's just it. It was spread out the whole, whole way. Straw had 15 game-winning RBIs, uh, Keith had 13, uh, Ray Knight had 13, and the rest of the guys. It was just, there wasn't any one guy that was uh, singled out. It's just, it just was a total team effort the whole way. And Daryl Strawberry coming up with his third Grand Slam home run. That was in the fifth inning, and Daryl, you got hit by a pitch ball yesterday, and, and it uh, did bother you. You got that uh, protection on there. Well, yeah, I just uh, wore it today just to make sure, you know, nothing seriously happened. Um, but it feels it feels fine, and, you know, to be in a situation with the bases loaded, you got an opportunity like that. If you can get the pitcher to make it, make a mistake, which he did make a mistake at that time, a fastball up where I liked the ball and I got a good swing on it. Well, let's take a look at that Grand Slam home run. Daryl Strawberry's 27th home run of the season, and he picks up his RBI total to 93, and that fastball, long gone. Yep, but, you know, like Kid was saying, he thought the ball he thought the ball was coming back in the way the right fielder was deacon. Um, but I didn't think so. I thought I hit it good. And like I say, when you're into a good groove and a home run, uh, home run stroke, it feels good to go up there and, and hit the ball like that, and you know it's off the ballpark. I'm just glad that um, things are turning around for everybody on the ball club. And we're really excited, like I said before, and it's nothing like going into the playoffs and, and being clutch in the playoffs. So it's a challenge to us, and we look forward to it. Well, you certainly ended the year on a real high note. The Grand Slam home run right there, and the Mets winning by a score of 9 nothing. Congratulations on a fantastic season all the way around. Well, thank you very much, Ralph. We'll look at you in Houston. Okay. We look forward to it. <laughs> We're excited. <laughs> Daryl Strawberry and Gary Carter, and we'll return right after this message from Mitsubishi Motors. about size 19 sneakers, Dave and I always get together for a few Miller Lights. And argue about who was the greatest player. You were the greatest. No, Bob, you were. At least we agree, Lights taste is the greatest. Yep, Lights also less filling. And you can't afford to get filled up when you're the great Bob Lanier. Come on, Dave, you won the MVP and the championship. Those were the two biggest feats in basketball. No, Bob, those were the two biggest feats in basketball. <laughs> <laughs> for the biggest taste, there's only one light beer, Miller Lights. Well, the New York Mets won it by a score of 9-0, and the Mets really having a big blowout here in this ball game. Fine pitching by Darling and also by Sid Fernandez, and great hitting by the Mets. Let's take a look at the highlights of the last game of the 1986 season. And everything looked very bright and rosy, as you can tell right there. Keith Hernandez gets hit by a pitch ball, and it looked like it might be serious, but it got him on the shoulder blade, and he is not hurt. He stays in the ball game, and that sets it up for Gary Carter to pick up a home run here to put the Mets up by a score of three to nothing for Gary Carter's 24th home run of the year, and he picks up RBI's number 103, 104, and 105 to tie a Mets record of 105 set by Rusty Staub. So the Mets leading by a score of three nothing. Ray Knight chips in here, drives it deep over the left field fence for Ray Knight his 11th home run of the year, and the Mets are leading by a score of five to nothing. Ray picking up his 75th and 76th runs batted in for the year and closing out a fine season just a shade under 300. Now Daryl Strawberry with a grand slam home run, and the Mets now lead it by a score of 9 to nothing. For Daryl Strawberry, his third grand slam home run, his 27th home run of the year, his 93rd RBI as he touches home plate. So Daryl Strawberry with a long home run there, and the Mets leading by a score of 9 to nothing. Now the drama of the ball game picks up a little bit as Sid Fernandez comes up to his last batter in the ball game. Two men out in the top of the ninth inning. He needs a strikeout here to pick up his 200th strikeout of the year, and he gets him with a curveball. Bobby Bonilla taking a look, and Sid Fernandez gets his first save in relief, and the Mets win it by a score 
of nine to nothing. A lot of drama, as Sid gets congratulated by the players, and the action on the field very intense as the Mets win their 108th ball game of the season. They lost 54. It was loss number 98 for the Pittsburgh Pirates, and the Mets setting a record for wins at home as they have picked up their 54th record home wins. All the Mets really doing quite a job in this season. New records in everything. New records for the Mets in runs scored, base hits, extra base hits, home runs, two base hits, and in the bullpen a fine job as they come in to get in the action. In the bullpen, of course, you had the fine relief pitching of Jesse Orozco and also the fine pitching of Roger McDowell. So the winning pitcher in the ball game was Darling. His record 15 and 6 for the year. Last year he was 16 and 6. Sid Fernandez picked up his first save in his second relief appearance, and he got his 200 strikeout. So a lot of action there. We'll be back to talk with John Morley, and he's from the concession side. Another look at baseball. We'll also look at the scoreboard in just a moment right after this message from NatWest USA. Well, our next guest is John Morley, who is in charge of concessions here at Shea Stadium. Also was at the Polo Grounds. In fact, he started at the Polo Grounds and when he was selling in the stands when he was a, just a little kid. And this happens to be a collector's item. It's the first yearbook ever printed by Stevens and Company. And uh, you see that it highlights the fact that Mets are newborn, 1962. It all started in 62, 25 years ago, in the Polo Grounds. And John, whose idea was this for this cover? That was Willard Mullen. And uh, that is a drawing of his grandchild at the time. And the, uh, the newborn baby was the idea, the conception of the Mets in 1962. And uh, these now go for about 80 to 90 dollars in um, souvenir uh, sales. And there are very few of them around. It was one of these things that was, uh, uh, as the years went on, we, we printed more, but uh, that just is a, a collector's item. There's something in here that I, I thought maybe it'd be interesting to you, Ralph, and maybe to your, uh, your audience. There's a picture of a, a young announcer in there that uh, I don't know whether you can pick up. But there are three of them up there. I, they, I sort of recognize them. Uh -huh. One fellow there is Lindsey Nelson, and then the uh, guy in the middle is something like uh, Ralph Kiner, I think his name was, and then, of course, Bob Murphy on the right. And that's what we looked like when we started. After all those losses the Mets had, we age a little bit. I know. Think, uh, we always think it's the other guy that gets old and not us. But anyway, that's the way it all started. Some of the names of that uh, in that yearbook, Ray Davio, Bill Hunter, Frank Thomas, Vinegar Ben Mizell, Joe Christopher, Bob Miller, Bob Moorhead, Craig Anderson, who won a doubleheader one day in relief and never won another game in the major league. Ken McKenzie, who was the only winning pitcher for the Mets in 1962, he won five and lost four. Felix Mantilla. Sammy Taylor, Al Jackson, who was a 20-game loser, Gene Woodling, a great hitter, but not for the Mets, Gil Hodges, Rod Keneal, Jim Hickman, Elia Chacon, Chris Ganazero, Cliff Cook, Charlie Neal. Boy, those are old names, aren't they? They were, and it was, it was a funny kind of year. You know, you, we're, look, we're talking about a year now where we're going to draw 3 million people. Uh, we 2,762,000 people paid, and in that first year, we drew 900 and uh, some odd thousand. And Part of that was 200,000 compressed in that one week, and the first time the Dodgers and the Giants came back into the Polo Grounds, we drew 200,000. So, I mean, we've come, what's the saying? We've come a long way, baby. It's, uh, it's great to be on top. And in 1964, the World's Fair here in New York, right across the way, Casey Stingo says, I don't know whether we're the ones that draw the people of the World's Fair. And this is the uh, Shea Stadium, the opening of the Shea Stadium. Yes, yes. And that's the yearbook for that year, and uh, 1964, the first year here at Shea Stadium. Now 1973, how about a look at 73? The Mets played Oakland in the World Series. Yogi Berra, the manager, and uh, the Mets losing in the seventh game of the World Series to Oakland. Yes, uh, you know, that was a surprising year. With, uh, uh, if, you know, recalling uh, that September, how all of a sudden everything seemed right, to come We're in last to place. We're in last, August. that's yeah. right. And uh, it j we just seemed to catch fire, and we kept rolling and rolling and rolling. And uh, it, it just was such a great finish to a, a year. One more question, John. How many hot dogs did you sell this year? Can you come up with a number? Uh, probably it'll be a shade uh, over about 2,600,000. Uh, close. We, we do close to one per person. That's a lot of mustard, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes, <laughs> it is. And uh, we've, been, we've been featuring uh, the Goulin's mustard for many, many years. 
We're talking with John Morley, who runs the concessions here at Shea Stadium, and uh, we'll return to take a look at the scoreboard after this message from Miller Light Beer. The Albert boys, fast break for their office. Steve rolls, Al picks, laterals behind his back, great kick! They drive to the corner, super handoff. Look at that control! Now watch this. Incredible! Al hits the top of the keys, stops, pivots. Oh, sweet dunk! Double dunk! Oh, wait, Al's in trouble. He lets it fly. Great assist! Channel 9 is proud to bring two all-star sportscasters to our winning news team. Al Albert, Ohio University, goalie Toledo Blades, sports voice of the USA Network. Steve Albert, founder of the Kent State hockey team, former ball boy for the New York Knicks, voice of the New Jersey Nets. Boy, those guys look good out there. Really tight. Every single move, perfectly planned. Catch Steve Albert and Al Albert on News 9 Primetime, delivering the sports as only an Albert can. They sit, they smile. Yes! yes. Steve Albert, Al Albert, Channel 9, double coverage. Well, the Mets in their final game of the year and winning by a score of 9-0. Once again, the grand prize winner, Connie Kershaw from 36 Harding Drive, Fairfield, New Jersey. And Connie wins two season tickets for games here at Shea Stadium next year. And the Mets closing out with 100 victories, and they're on their way to Houston tomorrow. They work out here at Shea Stadium, fly down to Houston tomorrow night, work out uh, the next day uh, in Houston, and then start up against uh, the Astros on Wednesday night. And the Mets will be going with Dwight Gooden, of course, Dwight, the ace of the staff. And uh, he'll be opposed by a former Met, Mike, uh, Mike Scott. Mike Scott pitched for the Mets for quite some time without a whole lot of success. Came up with a split-finger fastball, the changeup that has become so famous. And uh, he struck, up, struck out over 300 batters. Dwight incident, incidentally struck out 200 for the season. He and Sid Fernandez, who got his 200 in the ball game here today, leading the Mets in strikeouts. So in that first game, Dwight Gooden against uh, Mike Scott, and one of the things about that series, I think, that might be the interesting side of it to watch and see how they play it, where uh, Bob Nipper fits in. Nipper was the first man to shut out the Mets this year as they beat them right after the All-Star game. And uh, he is a left-hand pitcher. And, of course, if he does pitch, it will be interesting to know whether or not Backman will play at second base or they'll go with Tuffle because Tuffle, right-hand batter. And, of course, the other person would be Lenny Dykstra, whether he stays in the lineup and uh, or Mookie Wilson plays in center field. So it should be a well attended very interesting series when the Mets take on the Houston Astros for the championship of the National League and see who plays in the World Series. So we'd like to thank everybody that was connected with the program, our producer Carl Churkin, of course our director Bill Webb, and all the cameramen, all the people that work with us, and it's been a great year, and we'd like to thank you, our audience out there, being, being with us all season long, and most of all, I guess we should thank our sponsors who make this show available for me and for you. So once again, the final score, it's the Mets 9 and the Pittsburgh Pirates, nothing. Heiner's Corner has been brought to you by Miller Light Beer. For great taste, there is only one light beer. By Mitsubishi Motors, experience the sensation of a full line of new cars and trucks from Mitsubishi. Mitsubishi, perfecting the experience. And by NatWest USA, the people and the resources you need today and tomorrow. And by McDonald's, where it's always a good time for the great taste. Rob Kiner's guests will receive a gift certificate from Field Brothers, who feature designer and brand name menswear, fine service, and expert tailoring for the man of fashion. If quality makes a difference, shop Field Brothers. And a gift from Littman Jewelers, the Northeast's largest jewelers, a quartz watch by Pulsar. Littman features the complete Pulsar line at all 50 Littman locations in New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. Kiner's Corner, produced by Carl Cherkin, directed by Bill Webb, stage manager Curtis Reed. Production assistants, Joshua Shaheed and Adam Sykes.